morning, everyone. Good morning. Morning. Good morning. Okay. <laughs> well, thank you for making um, it to today's session um, for Creative Mornings. Uh, I think it's just amazing how we, um, you know, our team uh, gets to see so many new faces every time. It's just so much hope in the creative culture that we do know uh, exists in Mumbai, and we just—it's it, really—it's um, a mission to have people together share knowledge and um, hopefully create some magic if possible. So, um, so Creative Mornings, for people who don't know much, is a monthly lecture breakfast series. Um, it is held once um, once a month on a Saturday morning. Um, and um, it is, you know, for every a month we have a global theme. So if you've had a chance to look at the website, creativemornings.com, um, it is a, it's a global um, breakfast series now. It's across over 200 cities in the world, and uh, we're very proud to have and host one in Mumbai. And uh, the way it works is that we have a global theme, right? And um, so every city um, adopts the global theme according to their own culture. And um, so we will talk about that very shortly. Yeah, so just to kick off, um, we have a few handles that we can use for social media. Um, if you want to talk about it, this is where you will find us. Also, we have the speaker's handle over here, which I don't want to reveal very soon. I'd rather have him over. And um, I don't think so. This any of this is possible without the support of our global sponsors, um, because of which we actually have the opportunity and um, the leverage to actually stand here and talk to each other. So just eternally grateful for MailChimp, um, Shutterstock, Adobe, and WordPress. And, um, and now our local sponsors. Uh, we are just, I think, so thank you so much. I think a big round of, um, you know, just thank you for having us over and really encouraging the creative community to actually exist, um, you know, more than actually run. Um, I'm going to just quickly take you through what G5 Foundation for Contemporary Culture really is. It's a, it's a non-profit organization that encourages contemporary art and culture, good governance, and sustainability. G5A believe that the arts have the power to ignite change for the better by challenging people to think critically, creatively, and courageously. And uh, thank you, Port Cafe, for um, the wonderful yummy breakfast and coffee chai. Please feel free to hang out later and network uh, with a wonderful breakfast. This, again, would not be possible without well, the three of us. This is awkward. But this is the Creative Morning, <laughs> this is the creative morning team. Uh, we've been together for now roughly three and a half years. And um, it's just been an amazing journey to evolve um, with the brand and also see the community at large evolve by itself organically. So like I said, this month's theme is Pioneer. And um, you know, to, to when we started brainstorming about this, um, we do have a lot of ideas when it comes to Pioneer, but uh, given the fact that everybody's doing so many things all the time, uh, which is wonderful, but we really wanted to kind of um, distill it down to a person who is actually <laughs> doing some meaningful work, not just for himself, but also for the country at large, and also representing the country um, in, in the international forum. So I present to you Gautam Vazirani. Um, I am going to introduce him. Gautam curator at IMG Reliance is today one of the leading voices in sustainable fashion in India. Harper's Bazaar India recognized him as a change maker for the initiatives led by him at Lakme Fashion Week. He has also been recognized as a creative renaissance and has been instrumental in showcasing designer weaver synergies from around the country on mainstream fashion landscape. He aims to bridge the gap between mainstream fashion, artisan stakeholders and consumers, as well as promote ideas and principles of sustainable sustainability in the fashion industry through his work. I present to you Gautam. Thank 
Thank you. Thank you so much for that introduction. I'm sure by the time I finish my talk, uh, an idea, and you'll be ready with rotten eggs for fashion, fashionizing everything. So um, my journey, let me quickly start uh, with that point. What is my journey? So basically, I was born and brought up in Mumbai. I uh, lived all my life here. And uh, I basically uh, started working about 13, 14 years back. And I've had different kinds of careers in public relations, brand management, marketing. And here and there, I used to often feel that I'm going to retire very soon because I find very little meaning in what I'm trying to do. And I got into the fashion business. This is a picture which is about 10 years back. I wasn't modeling, but I was actually working for this brand called Gas Jeans. And I really started vibing, resonating very strongly with fashion. I liked the creativity of fashion. Um, went on with it with a couple of more brands, companies, and then got my job at Lakme Fashion Week, IMG Reliance, which is the organizer. IMG Reliance is, you know, the world's number one sports uh, fashion marketing company. It runs New York Fashion Week, Sydney, and a hell lot of other, you know, sports properties. So when I started at Lakme Fashion Week, I basically uh, was trying to understand for the first time what is this whole world of fashion. And I was starting this job after a gap year. Uh, during the gap year, I spent quite a few months trying to study Tibetan Buddhism in Meklod Ganj, uh, in Dharamshala, with diverse community of people from all across the world. So I tried to, you know, understand that is fashion all about just all the craze uh, with regards to clothes, you know, makeup, hair, or there is much more to it. Uh, is it about uh, a system, an approach, a style? Um, and also, you know, uh, how does it impact, you know, society? I mean, clothes is something which is basic. We all need clothes to wear. So when does something as basic as a piece of clothing become an idea that you see the whole, you know, industry trying to make it into some kind of an aspirational dream and projecting it as something, you know, which if you acquire, <laughs> gives you some kind of power to stand out in the society. So I, I wasn't sure what is this whole idea of fashion. Um, I tried to see what was happening around me and I felt that probably this is, you know, a big projection of fashion. Uh, this seems to be the preoccupation. I love drag queens. I hope I'm a drag queen one day. But what I'm trying to say is that, um, you know, this whole glamour, style, this whole mania. So is this really, you know, what fashion is or is there something more to it? I was very clear having worked on the corporate side of fashion and, you know, which has much more to do with operations and you know, how much you make, how much you sell. Uh, who buys, you know, your clothes, and what stories are creating for the consumer. I was pretty much kind of done in my head that if this is fashion, I don't think I'm going to go any far. Um, I tried to really reflect deep on what I feel, you know, can be meaningful fashion for me. I love the word fashion, but can it have some meaning, or is it just, you know, about superficial ideas? So. That's why I, I went back to that, I go back to the definition to see where do I stand, you know. So I think for me, uh, a manner of doing something which explains, you know, that you have an intent uh, behind, uh, you know, the action that you're doing, uh, even if it's in fashion, is much, much more kind of sensible. It relates to me more than the first part. And uh, again, you know, I think people just assume that they know what fashion is. Uh, everybody's wearing white sneakers suddenly, crop pants, you know, difficult to fit into clothes, colors that don't work, you know, for them. I don't want to be a critic. But it just becomes like, you know, this whole trend. Uh, I mean, I see uh, there was an exhibition that happens in Bombay, uh, and I see women 
with due respect to all the women and men here, I, I see most of us just running around to shop as if, you know, somebody told us that uh, tomorrow the world is going to end and as many clothes as you can accumulate, it depends on that how many more days you've left, you know, something like that, so random. I look around and I ask people, why are you buying what you're buying? And, and nobody has a clear answer. Anyway, so uh, a manner of doing something is, I think, what makes more sense to me. Uh, now, coming to the point of, you know, what is sustainable fashion, it's very important to reflect on what is, why does sustainability need to be there? Either sustainability is like a fundamental idea, so if you need to survive, you need to have a livelihood, you need to have employment, you need to have, you know, a good family and a good, you know, life, and that is sustainability. Or, you know, uh, what is the impact of the way you're living on the society, the environment, you know, around you, including yourself. So, uh, quite some time back, you know, all these huge, you know, billboard kind of, you know, stories started going around. Uh, that, you know, fashion is toxic and it's in your closet and you need to get rid of, you know, junk and fast fashion and all of that. I, I, I'm not sure how many of you uh, really are clued into this kind of an idea. How many of you, if you all can just raise your hand so I'll get an idea, um, kind of a, you know, perspective. How many of you have heard of some kind of activism or campaigning being done, you know, for fashion is bad, the fast fashion? So, quite a majority is aware that, you know, the fast fashion world is bad. Maybe not just fast fashion, from where I'm coming, it could be a lot more. Uh, so, this is the problem, you know, I mean, when you look at, when you do some research and brands, find out that huge Western brands like Zara and Gap, so you have rivers in South India which have toxic water. I went for a conference in Bangalore and I was told that there is a factory making for Zara and they uh, leave out, you know, the toxic water from dying and all other processes in the night in the irrigation canal, which is, you know, behind the factory. And that canal is used by the farmers also in that area. Now imagine, you, we may get our Zara, you know, t-shirts for, you know, five and ten, you know, dollars. But we are absolutely not mindful and aware that the kind of, you know, uh, harm it is causing to our food supply chain, our, you know, environment is actually getting in somewhere, you know, uh, into our lives and is creating huge problems. There's a huge amount of fuss, you know, that a new Ebola patient was, you know, found, uh, a new swine flu, you know, case, you know, emerged in this part of the country or that, uh, you know, state. But there is hardly any uh, attention given to these huge, you know, uh, uh, processes of manufacturing which are toxicating the environment constantly, you know. And uh, there are quite a few studies being done, but not enough. I mean, we're still, still far away. There are no such even laws, I would say, in our country which only target the textile, you know, sector or the fashion sector. And then the whole idea of fashion itself becomes so fleeting, you know, everybody just assumes Oh, it's good clothes, you need to look smart, you need to have the latest outfit from XYZ brand. So that seems to be, you know, the whole idea. Now, toxic fashion for me is as good as, you know, junk that we are trying to put into our mouth. So uh, if you're living with negative thoughts the whole day and you're angry, upset, frustrated, if you're eating all the wrong kinds of food, and then what do you do? You go for meditation, you go for spirituality, you, you know, decide to clean up your diet, you go for a new nutritionist, you know, a prescription, you get, you know, all chia seeds and turmeric lattes and all of that. But you continue to wear, you know, really bad fashion, which is really bad, which, you, which we don't know. So we just assume that, you know, oh, we look fine and fit and then we put on all our amazing clothes but we have we we really don't care where it's coming from and who made it so i feel that sustainable fashion should be kind of broken down to a consumer or to us relates that it is fashion which is healthy 
fashion which makes you know people and the environment safe and happy so honestly for me that is what it kind of uh, encapsulates into uh, because otherwise you know i feel it gets too jargonized it's too impractical an idea for consumers and everybody to understand so everybody knows that taking care of your health your mind is extremely important so then what about your wardrobe you know are you doing enough for it what are you how are you basically trying to clean up the mess uh this is kind of the direction uh i would say that continues to motivate and inspire my work uh, at img reliance and uh, what we are trying to do i mean as a as a um, you know as a thought leader sort of a property or an event uh, or where i am in the industry we are right on the top of the pyramid we create trends and ideas that you know percolate down that get adopted by mass brands retailers it creates stories that you know inspire influence consumers through the media so on one hand you know i would say i'm doing projects where um we are trying to let's say get into village clusters you know and we are looking at uh, this is um, a group of women who are differently able you know uh, near amdabad and with the india's largest sewing machine brand usha we are trying to create a project where we get designers who are one of our main stakeholders to skill these women to a level that they can actually make beautiful clothes for the modern market so that is the livelihood of sustainability the materials that are being used are natural so you have hand looms and handicrafts of india and all the techniques that go into it been employed and then you have clothes you know that have been made that people like you and me would appreciate and buy which are affordable we also work very very closely with artisans this is an artisan in the center picture called chaman bhai uh, he's a national awardee 10th generation artisan now sitting in his small actually not small i would say quite a luxurious hut you know in bhujodi in kutch very happy life you know all the brothers in the family they are weaving together um, they use the organic cotton which is of a certain type which is very sustainable grown in kutch and then they weave them into different kinds of products there is an indian designer from jaipur uh, who is working with these organic cotton weaving you know artisans and selling in 300 stores across the globe so there is a lot happening in sustainability on that front and these are the stories that we you know uh, promote uh, we also mentor and groom them after we launch chaman bhai as a designer not as an artisan on the runway uh chaman bhai was felicitating our prime minister modi you know in an event after 6 months so big things happen um and then there is this uh, third picture is a designer entrepreneur who has 300 artisans in bihar um you know they were alive the culture of khadi and how again you know through his work uh, he can target the contemporary market so this is the kind of space that you know we operate in and what i basically look at in terms of promoting sustainability these ideas seem a bit far from the mass consumer market but you know the the whole purpose is to kind of get there to create products and processes that ultimately 10 years down the line will become more and more mainstream so it's a bit of a long journey but it's difficult but it's not impossible but obviously it needs consistent efforts the other point i wanted to highlight is so that's why i feel that either you can start with sustainability you know start looking for brands and products which you think are healthy so if you're a shopaholic if you can't live without fashion if you need to wear clothes new clothes every single day or week then maybe you know we need to start asking the clothes that we are buying how healthy they are however if we want to deal with this at the long term level then one needs to also look at the mindset you know that that one has about sustainability so when we are med- trying to meditate and learn all these you know techniques of tai chi and yoga and power yoga it's all to become you know healthy and happy so the same thing i think applies also to sustainable fashion when we are trying to think of what we need to buy basically there needs to be a more mindset change and that's what we are trying to do through our work um 
obviously we need to you know make it we need to package it in a way that people start liking it to start believing in it but the idea starts with the mindset you know can you recycle the clothes that you have in your wardrobe can you start looking for clothes which are made with healthier materials do you need to go and shop you know every month do you need to be so impulsive about you know acquiring and enjoying the fashion that you do so i think mindset level is for me a more fundamental you know uh, approach than just you know cleaning up um, what is at the visual and perceptive level of fashion and that's why i think it's no different if we are trying to get into uh, you know yoga and all the spiritual act- activities it's no different than for fashion as well we need to have the same approach somewhere um one of the main main you know uh, ideas that we are trying to do is you know you have designers who speak of uh, uh, of the different crafts that they are trying to reinvent and revive and it's all amazing you know to hear and look at but the problem is that no one's really talking about the people who are behind these crafts and if you if you research and find out the people behind these crafts so there's one sob story that they all you know uh, are struggling with their livelihoods the new generation of artisans doesn't want to you know continue but somewhere also the fact is that you know all the attention is being taken away by somebody who's not really working on the ground and grassroots level you know it's like everybody enters a restaurant eats amazing food is appreciating the restaurant and somewhere the chef starts feeling that my name is just not out there you know if there's somebody who's really putting in creativity and curating something if it's just a fast food chain obviously no one cares um so it's almost like an artistry you know in the work and that's what artisans do the kind of artistry that they put in their work it's beyond our comprehension you know they have to do some 14 15 different steps they don't have any major post graduate qualifications in design systems design or technology or anything like that just with the oral you know knowledge that is passed on every generation they pick up the skills and they create amazing textiles honestly i have traveled to far off places and seen the way they work with no formal knowledge so for all the artistry that goes into that if they don't you know start coming out as you know uh, collaborative designers i feel that there's very little then for them to you know um, feel motivated uh, there's also an issue of how much are they paid are they paid well or ethically or not that's that's a very big you know fundamental economic issue but what we are trying to do is fight for greater transparency so the designer so this is a label called puch ki they start talking about the artisan that they are collaborating with for the collection so as a consumer you need to know you know who is this who is this anonymous artisan in which village of india who's sitting there in 45 degrees uh, you know in the summer and making the clothes with natural colors for you this is very very important if we have to tackle sustainability at the india level because i think india is one of the only few countries that still has craft traditions alive um and as far as i understand the employment generation of craft in the country is second after agriculture so it's kind of huge the scale is huge and i think this is the vision for the sector so next time when you hear oh i have amazing clothes uh, some banarasi saree or you know some beautiful khadi from somewhere or some beautiful kanji most of the artisans i meet mean, try to find out you know who may might be we might have less money but we are not poor you know we are quite content with the lifestyles we've chosen for ourselves i think they are much much more happy than people in the cities and they're doing the creative work that they really believe in as opposed to you know people in cities who are just running around you know trying to earn money and buy fast fashion constantly the fact that they've chosen to stay where they are not migrate to a city continue traditions with local materials local cultural you know knowledge that they have and uh, if that can translate into products that people start liking and believing in because i think the consumer if we need to uh, get the conviction of the consumer on a long term level 
she needs to get something which looks beautiful as well it's not just sold on sympathy so the style value of course is very important as much as i would love to stay on the side of fashion which is you know the manner in which it is made uh the glamour and the style and the perception value of fashion is something which is inherent can't be taken out and that's where i feel that this is you know where the market should be moving this is a project which we call craft is cool and we really try to uh develop it we really try to position the artisans who worked in it as designers um who ultimately you know need to get acknowledged for the work that they are doing on the other side um if you look at the western world if you look at us europe and you know all the major economies they are struggling more with the industrial textiles that are being made these are textiles being made in the factories because ultimately handmade textiles can only service a limited number you know of consumers so when it comes to uh, industrial textiles which are made in the factories with polyester with cotton you know with all other uh, fibers and fabrics there again quite a few innovations are happening with regards to where and how it is made in terms of the material and the technology so like i said a lot of you know uh, chemicals that go into making the t-shirts that we wear th- those you know uh, can be changed or some kind of innovation done to make them more healthy for the environment and that's happening so we did a project called restart fashion where we highlighted fabrics which were made with cotton with plastic with wool but all 100% recycled so that there's no dumping happening in the landfills of our cities and you know countries but something that comes back into the value chain and becomes like a circular fashion model for the industry and for the consumers uh, who still want style value and still want you know cheaper clothes can can look at buying something which was made with 100% recycled yarns this is a a huge movement which is happening globally in terms of sustainability now just to uh, towards my uh, conclusion i would say that um, the kind of universe of you know people that we work with and we need to work with to really bring the whole movement of sustainable fashion to a greater momentum is something like this and uh, it's quite overwhelming when i look at it um visually we just get you know kind of preoccupied with designers and fashion models celebrities but actually the real work is happening all here and i would say uh, this is the direction which we are trying to move we are trying to look at how in the supply chain side um with lot of other you know creative people like yourself who are sitting here we can collaborate and create new ideas for fashion so there are technologists and sociologists and agriculturists you know who are we're trying to create more cross linkages to see how knowledge can emerge how designers can get like toolkits on how they can be sustainable by following these 10 steps um there are now people who are researchers who are working on what are the 10 types of you know easily available waste materials that the industry could use for making jackets and shoes and bags and shirts for example so i would say this is uh, this is you know the kind of universe that one, i mean i need to deal with and i do deal with um, on a regular basis and this creates you know my world of sustainable fashion but the point is that as long as you know we continue to go out there and buy fashion as if it's a life saving drug or uh, it's a pill of prozac that's going to keep you happy all the time or i don't know what it is you could define it for yourself but as long as we continue to you know be obsessed with fashion as a consumption you know object that's leading to a god knows what i mean when you say happiness it's pretty subjective we are not going to deal with the problem at a fundamental level you know so we have fast fashion companies that are creating 
new ideas for sustainability, you know, new materials. However, the the burden, the the load of you know producing so much for seven billion people is ultimately creating a huge amount of pollution. So I think there needs to also be a movement, you know, within us to see how we can uh, tackle the, the consuming habits that we have and how the world can uh, perhaps, you know, start reflecting on why are we buying so much fast fashion I mean, just because it's for $2 or $5. What do we do with the clothes that we have in our wardrobes? Perhaps we need to revisit our wardrobes and really see how much do we wear what we have. And then what do we do with, you know, what we keep it there for a long time. So I think this is, uh, this is you know, the fundamental problem. And just to conclude, I am really looking forward to creating knowledge together um, so that we, you know, as an as a industry, we are not just limited to fashion with regards to clothes and accessories, but with regards to a movement, a filter, of looking at uh, you know our world and making it a healthy, happy place. So here's my email address. If you have any amazing ideas at any level, please feel free to you know write to me, and uh, yeah, we can collaborate and do something together, and and probably you know put the, some seeds that will give us great results in the next five years. So that's all from me. Thank you for listening, and I hope I didn't bore you. Um, and uh, yeah, I guess we could, you know, open the questions.